Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing my Bengal keychain tutorial. I had originally made one of these for myself a couple months back and I absolutely love it. It's one of my most favorite keychains to make. And I had made a little TikTok video on how to do these and you guys just absolutely loved it. A lot of people requested a full tutorial, so here we are. I hope you guys enjoy this. Of course, I'm gonna have links down below for all the products that you see in this video. We'll also have a few discount codes down there for you as well, so be sure to check that out. And you guys, if you like our video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so you don't miss a new tutorial. We do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you didn't already know, we are also on TikTok, so find us there as well at Flynn Sisters Boutique. We're easy to find. Okay, you guys, that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so first things first, we're gonna pick all of our patterns and our glitter colors and our accessories that we're gonna use to make our keychains. In my opinion, this is the hardest part of the whole process because there's so many options. Uh, but I kinda try to stick to like one color palette and go from there. Anyway, we're gonna prep our acrylic blanks first before we apply our glitter. You're just gonna take off the paper backing from one side of your acrylic blanks. I'm using three different acrylic blanks for this keychain design, one four inch bangle, one three inch circle, and one mini heart charm. I will have these acrylic blanks linked down below. You can find these at zindi.com. All right, and once we get that paper backing off, we're just gonna sand our acrylic blank lightly with a sanding block or whatever kind of sandpaper you have on hand, doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna wipe them clean with 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. This is just gonna prep our surface and make sure everything adheres to our acrylic blanks nicely. So once these are all cleaned up on that one side, I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I only mixed about 10 milliliters of epoxy for this particular project. And I'm using regular epoxy. Some people use like UV epoxy, like the um, stuff that cures under UV light or whatever. I just prefer regular epoxy because that's just what I'm used to and I get better results with it. I'm going to tape all my acrylic blanks to a piece of cardboard to help stabilize them. And when you guys are adding your glitter to your epoxy, I just add enough to kind of cover the top of my epoxy in the medicine cup there. I don't know like how to quantify that amount, but I'm trying my best to show you guys on camera here. And I'm gonna mix my glitter in with a stainless steel coffee stir stick. Well, these are my favorite things to use when I'm making these keychains. Make sure you mix all your glitter in with the epoxy really well so that you have even distribution and you don't want too much glitter, but you also don't want too little. So it's kind of the hard part is finding that balance. And I'm just gonna spread on that glitter and epoxy mixture to the side that we had prepped here and i'm using this little silicone spreader tool but you could also use that same metal stir stick that we used right before this to stir in the glitter and it's just kind of like frosting a cookie you know take your time with it make sure that you get full coverage from edge to edge you want to take it all the way out to the edge on your acrylic blank uh, without getting it on the side obviously uh, so that's where it gets kind of tricky, but having it taped to this cardboard really helps. One of my, I think it was one of my viewers or somebody from my group suggested this tip and it's been really helpful for me. So once these get all covered and, you know, my glitter's on there nicely, I'm going to use uh, my regular torch that I use on my cups. I'm just going to torch the surface of my epoxy to pop any air bubbles another tip for you guys too is before you do this is you want to let your epoxy sit for about five minutes before you add the glitter and you put it onto the cup this is going to help your epoxy kind of stay put a little better and make it kind of a little more manageable at least 
I think so. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but it, I don't know. That's just how I do it. So you'll see here, I'm just going to do a quick shot with my torch and then you're going to let these dry for eight to 12 hours before we mess with them any further. Once that epoxy is dry, we're going to prep the other side, which will be where we're going to apply our decal. And I'm going to prep this side the same way that I prepped the glitter side. You're going to remove that paper protective sheet thing. And then you're going to use a sanding block to scuff up the surface and then wipe it off with some 91% rubbing alcohol and paper towel. And once we've got these prepped, I'm going to show you guys how I create the decal for these particular keychains. All right, so the font that I usually use for these is called Hello Beautiful, and I have scoured the interwebs for that font, and I'm serious, you guys, I cannot find it. I would totally link it for you guys if I could find it, but I really can't. I got it off Etsy a long time ago. I, I want to say I purchased it from Etsy two years ago or more, and I looked on Etsy and I couldn't find it. However, if you guys go to like Creative Market or fontbundles.com and you type in script fonts, you will find tons of beautiful fonts that work just as well. And what you're looking for is fonts that come with swashes and glyphs. That's what gives you the cute little tail on either end of your initials for this kind of design. So look for a font that has those extras included and typically you're going to have to pay for a font that comes with all that stuff. There are some free fonts on defont.com that you could probably find that also include swashes and glyphs. However, like some of the really good ones that you probably really want, they're probably going to cost you a little bit. So try to look out for sales. I know Creative Market and fontbundles.com and all those other ones, they usually have sales going on all the time. Just kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, so once you find a font that has those pretty swashes and glyphs, <laughs> you want to download it to your phone or your computer, whatever you normally work with. I'm going to show you guys how I work with these fonts on my phone. If you don't know how to download a font to your phone, there's tons of YouTube tutorials on how to do that. And I will link one down below in the description box if you guys need some help with adding fonts to your phone. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> once we've got the font, once we got it on our phone, now we're going to create uh, our initial for this keychain design. So I usually design mine in Fonto. All right, and once you're in the app, you're gonna press that camera button, then hit plain images. In this screen, you're gonna select that white box and hit the small square on the top right hand corner and hit use. Here's your canvas that you're gonna be working with. You're gonna tap on it and select add text. And then you're gonna go into font and you're gonna select the font that you had downloaded to create your initials or whatever font you wanna work with. You're gonna to wanna to work with a font that has swashes and glyphs. Again, that's like what we're doing for this design. Obviously you can do whatever kind of font you want. I'm just gonna show you how I do this particular one. I have an app on my phone called Unicode and in Unicode I'm able to access all the swashes and glyphs that my fonts come with. So I'm going to go through all these little extra swashes and glyphs that come with the Hello Beautiful font and I'm going to locate the one that I want to use that has that pretty monkey tail <laughs> kind of situation. Uh, and so once I find the one that I want to use. I'm just going to click on it and hit the top, the little square at the top right hand corner of my screen and hit share glyph. After I select share glyph, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go back into the Fonto app and I'm holding down my cursor and I'm going to select paste. And I'm going to repeat that process for the second letter in my um, monogram initials here. So we're going to go back to Unicode and I'm going to select uh, the letter D 
with like an opposite facing monkey tail or glyph or swash, whatever <laughs> is supposed to be. Again, you're going to hit the little square at the top right hand corner, hit share glyph, then hit copy. Go back to Fonto, press down on your cursor and select paste. So now you'll see we have L and D and they're nice and pretty. Um, my text is white by default for some reason. So I'm going to go into style and hit color black. And then under spacing, we're going to make the letters go in closer until they touch, as you can see here. And once that looks good to me, I'm going to resize it a little larger. And then I'm going to go back in, just click on it again and hit style again. And, or no, sorry, I'm going to save it first. <laughs> I'm going to save this original version first. Okay. And then I'm going to click on it again and I'm going to hit style. And then we're going to go stroke. I'm going to change the alpha all the way to 100% and then I'm going to change the color of the alpha to pink and then I'm going to change the width to at least like 9 or 10. I want to say I usually do 10. Okay and there's our offset. So once that's created I'm going to hit save image. So you'll end up with your original you know your original initials and then your offset version and you're going to upload both of those to Cricut Design Space because we're going to be working with both of them for this particular design. Okay, and once I have both of those uploaded to Cricut Design Space, I am going to get onto my computer and I'm going to work with the other files um, that we're using. So anytime that you order an acrylic blank from Zindi.com, they're going to send you the files that you need for the vinyl decals. They're already shaped and sized appropriately, so you don't have you don't want to change them at all. I'm just ungrouping this one and only using that inset version of the four inch wristlet file. OK, because we're only going to put vinyl on the wristlet. Um, in just a real basic circle there. So I deleted everything else that came with that file and I'm only keeping that inset version. I also use the Cricut shapes feature to make a 2.88 inch circle. Again, that's a 2.88 inch circle and that's what we're gonna use for the three inch acrylic blank that nests inside that four inch wristlet. I've also got the uh, you know, initials that we made along with the offset version. And I am just kind of playing around with them and making sure they're the width that I want them to be. And I want to make sure that my offset looks nice. If you need to change the width of your op offset and make it thicker, you can go back into Fonto and mess around with that stroke feature in Fonto to make them thicker or thinner, depending on how you want it to look. I'm going to group those two together and put them in front of my three inch acrylic blank shape here. Well, I guess it's a 2.88 inch circle <laughs> shape here. And I'm just, again, playing with the size of my initials here until I like the way it looks. And I'm going to center it, make sure everything looks nice, because what we're going to do is we're going to slice out that offset version of our initials so that we can nest in the original size initial, if that makes sense. You guys will see what I mean later on. So I'm going to select the offset version and the circle, and I'm going to slice it. So this is what we're left with. And see how this goes in nicely. Now, once you have this all set, you do not want to change the sizing. Everything is sized how it needs to be. So don't mess with that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to select all the shapes on my screen here and I'm going to make them all the same color so I can cut them all on the same mat. And I'm going to arrange them on the mat so that I can use, you know, the minimal amount of printed vinyl because that stuff's expensive. <laughs> 
All right, so once we got it cut out, um, I'm just gonna separate out my pieces, see how I had to cut it so I didn't waste all that printed vinyl inside the wristlet shape, okay? So then I'm just gonna transfer my decals to my blanks like I normally would. And a lot of people have given me like different ideas and hacks to make this process a little easier like some people have mentioned like the soapy water method or using wax paper and I'll be honest like none of those hacks have really worked for me the only thing that's worked for me is just eyeballing it and letting it go uh so I'm sorry <laughs> I haven't showed you guys alternative ways to do this it's just you know my job is just to show you guys how I do things not the easiest or the best way it's just show you how I do it um, and and that's all I can really do so apologies if you guys are struggling with your vinyl placement on these blanks I'm sure there's a lot of other videos on like some hacks to make it easier I just I don't know I don't I don't vibe with it this is just my way to do it so here we are <laughs> all right and then I'm gonna put that initial on the inside of our sliced offset that we created earlier and it just creates this beautiful look where your offset is now that glitter that you had in the background. And I failed to show the heart charm in Cricut Design Space. The heart charm has its own file as well from Zindi when you purchase the pack of heart charms. Um, so you just cut the little heart and put it on like all the other decals. Once I have my decals on, I'm going to bore out the hole with this uh, reamer tool thing. I think you can get it. It's like called a bead reamer. I don't know. I just found this in my garage and I use it to poke holes in the vinyl and then I clean it up with my X-Acto knife. Once I'm done with that, I am going to apply liquid latex to the dried glitter side of my blank. And this liquid latex hack is the bomb. I'm so glad I figured out how to do this. My girl Trina from Diamonds and Dust had a great video on this and I absolutely loved this idea. I will link her video down below because it's really good too, but you're just going to apply this liquid latex to the back of your acrylic blank so that it's protected when you put the epoxy over on the decal side, okay? And that liquid latex will dry clear, so once it's totally clear, you know it's dry and you're ready to apply epoxy to the decal side of your blank. If you are allergic to liquid latex, if you have um, latex allergies in your customer base or something, then you probably would want to avoid using liquid latex because uh, I, I think it does leave some kind of residue um, that's not safe. Uh, you could probably do the same thing with uh, contact cement, like good old regular crafting contact cement. If any of you have used contact cement, let me know. Let me know how that worked, if it worked in the same way. Anyway, mainly the liquid latex is just a way to mask off that glitter side so that the epoxy that we're putting on the decal side doesn't leak down and mess up that other side okay which is really helpful for me because i use regular epoxy on my keychains and it has a tendency to leak down into the wrong side and mess it up <laughs> so liquid latex is amazing all right you guys so here i am just putting that final coat of epoxy over my decaled side i'm doing it the same way that i did the glitter side it just doesn't have glitter in it it's just this clear regular epoxy. Okay, I'm spreading it on with a metal coffee stir stick, which makes the job go by a little bit quicker. And you just want to carefully spread it on there edge to edge. And then you're going to let this dry for about eight to 12 hours before you mess with it. So here we are just removing the liquid latex from the back after our epoxy had dried over the decal side. And look at how cool, it, this is so satisfying. This is my favorite part. <laughs> so it just pulls off and there is no epoxy on the back where it doesn't need to be. So it works out perfectly. It works better for me than masking tape because I was trying to put masking tape on the back and that didn't work. Um, this worked like a charm. Look at how beautiful. I was so excited. So 
once you get all that liquid latex removed, it just peels right off. Everything's ready to go for hardware. The hardware that I use for these is from AliExpress. So the rose gold keychain setups that I like, again, are from AliExpress. They take three months or so to ship over from China. <laughs> They take a really long time. There are some that you can get on Amazon, but they don't have the same kind of chain and jump ring setup that I like. So I will try to link these particular ones, but just be aware that they take a really long time to get here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some extra jump rings to this heart charm. And the heart charm, the three inch circle, and the four inch bangle are all going to have their own chain on the keychain. Okay, so I did disassemble two other keychain, um, two other keychains to get these pieces. So you'll see what I mean when you get your keychain pieces. They all come with a little chain and jump ring. I just took a couple apart so that I have some extra chains and jump rings because I wanted them all to match and I wanted them to all have the same thick gauge as the ones that come with the full keychain setup. And the way you're going to assemble this is the three inch circle should nest inside that four inch wristlet. So the chain that you put on the four inch wristlet will have one less link in its chain than the three inch circle, okay? So you just remove one of those links from the chain that you have on your four inch wristlet piece and that's how they're gonna nest together on the keychain. how it does, if that makes sense. It's really hard for me to articulate how to set up the hardware on these. So I hope you guys can kind of get the picture um, through watching the video and seeing the pictures and stuff, how this works out. So here again, if you kind of measure, you'll see how you need to take off one of those links. And so I just removed the link the same way that I would, you know, take apart a jump ring. You just spread it apart sideways instead of outward you just spread it apart sideways if that makes sense and then remove it and then you put them onto your keychain ring so there you have it it's all set to go i'm gonna add the last chain to my little heart charm here and then add that to my keychain and here we go that's that's it for this one. So the hardware is pretty simple. It looks complicated, but it's really not. Again, I just took apart, you know, a couple different keychain, full keychain setups to use the chain and jump rings from those to create this whole one. Okay. On the edges of my keychain, I just take a craft knife and scrape off any kind of excess epoxy that might be there and that's the finished piece so i think this one turned out beautifully i love this print with this glitter i think it's so feminine and girly i also made another one with a darker color glitter you guys i'm gonna have all these vinyls and glitter colors linked below if you guys want to follow along and make the same one and that's it for this tutorial i hope you guys loved this video let me know what you thought in the comments Thank you, thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you guys again on Wednesday. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.